we want to finish this series. So it's a three-part series. The first of all is saved or born again to difference. And we know that it's about the seed because when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, it's a representation of being conceived. Amen. We know that the Holy Spirit is the birther. And the Bible tells us that unless you are born of spirit, unless you're born of water and spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Well, it's a representation of the kingdom of God manifesting in your life. Amen. And we talked about that there is a representation of the eternal kingdom that you must be born again to get, enter in, and that's with death, isn't it? Amen. Amen. But there is a representation that the kingdom of God is manifest in you right here on earth. That's why Jesus said, let thy kingdom come. Amen. Amen. On earth as it is in heaven. Praise God. So we see that there is this difference of uh, saved and born again. Now we know that also that we can go right back into that saved position again. We must maintain that born again position. Amen. Amen? Because then we go back to that saved position and people backslide and they end up lost. Well, are they truly lost? And this is what we want to talk about tonight. Is about, and the title of this is The Lie of Always Saved. Amen? Amen? Praise be to God. So if you'll grab your Bibles, please. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Quicken us, revive us, and teach us for your glory. Would you for, turn to 1 Timothy 4? 1 Timothy chapter 4. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy chapter 4. And to God be the glory. We got a lot to cover. And we want to try and squeeze it in this tape. <laughs> you know, and there's such a controversy over whether you're saved, whether you can lose your salvation. You know, it's been going on a long time. And it's in the differences of denominations and so forth. But, you know, it's not about a denominational thing. First of all, you won't have to worry about whether you're going to heaven or not, or whether you're going to lose your salvation if you have a total relationship with the Lord. You don't have to worry about it. Amen? But for those, those that argue over it, sometimes I believe it's because they still want to do the things of the world and expect to get into heaven. But we must understand one thing. When Jesus was taken up to heaven, who came to take him? The angels. Amen? So if the angels come to take those who are right with God, guess who comes to take those who aren't? The demons, right. So wherever you're serving, when you die is where you go. Hello? Praise be to God. In 1 Timothy, in chapter 4, and in verse 1, it says, Now the Spirit expressly says, in other words, expressly, he was emphasizing the importance. And who's he talking about? The Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. That means they are making a choice to walk away from following Jesus Christ. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Giving heed to deceiving spirits. That means listening to the voice of the stranger. And doctrines of demons. Now, doctrines of demons is a representation also of doctrines of men because it's the demons that are telling the man what doctrine to listen to. Paul warned us. He said, many will come preaching the same gospel, but a different Jesus. Amen? Because my Jesus is the one that delivers, heals, imparts, and is the baptizer of the Holy Ghost. Because God wants us all to have power with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you don't have that power. Amen? Now, if Jesus got baptized with the Holy Spirit, me and you should too. Amen? Amen? Turn to 1 John in chapter 5. Praise be to God. 1 John in chapter 5. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Amen. In verse 16. And the Word tells us, if anyone sees his brother sinning, a sin which does not lead to death, hmm, is everybody with me? 
he will ask and he will give him, who will give him? Jesus will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. Does everybody understand that? So we see that there is sin that doesn't lead to death, is there? Amen. There is sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is sin not leading to death. So we know that there is sin that leads to death and there is sin not leading to death. The representation of sin that leads to death is a broken covenant sin. Does everybody get it? In other words, you might sin. We sin every single day, don't we? I mean, by thoughts, by words, by deeds. But there is a, a sin that breaks covenant with God. That's like adultery. Hello? Amen. That breaks covenant with God. You know how many people that I've talked with that believe that once you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you're saved no matter what you do. That is totally incorrect. How can you serve the devil and expect to get in the throne room of God? Well, then they say, well, you weren't saved. But that's incorrect because the Bible says anyone who calls on the name of the Lord is saved. That's why many people get saved on their deathbed. Even though that they were believers a long time ago. But they didn't repent. Hello? Because you and I should be repenting every single day. Because it is the ministry of the Spirit. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Hallelujah. Let's go to Titus 2. In chapter, chapter 2 and verse 11. While we're out in this area of the Bible. Titus 2. It's under T's. <laughs> Is everybody with me? In Titus chapter 2, in verse 11. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. The teaching is the lie of always saved. In verse 11 it says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Are all men saved? No, because no, everybody makes a choice, don't they? Amen. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live what? Soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ, who gave himself for us that he might, hello, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Why is might involved? Because we have a part of this also. Does everybody understand that? The Bible says that Jesus is the door, isn't he? In other words, he made way for me and you to come in through that door that we can learn the ways to maintain. The word believe means to what? Follow. follow. If you truly believe, you'll follow. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Well, let's go a little bit further here. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel, Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 18. 18, chapter 18 in the book of Ezekiel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we know that there is sin that leads to death and sin that doesn't lead to death, right? The representation of death means separation from God. Separation from God. In verse 21, the word says, But if a wicked man turns from all his sins which he has committed, keeps all my statutes, and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Does everybody get that? Amen. None of the transgressions which he has committed shall he be remembered against him because of the righteousness which he has done, he shall live. Do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord God, and not that he should turn from his ways and 
live. Verse 24. But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does not and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, he, shall he live? All the righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered. When you break covenant, everything that you stored in heaven is gone. But thank God that we can start all over through the blood of the Lamb. Because of the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty and the sin which he has committed, because of them he shall die. Hello? Amen. So we see that God is telling us after we've sinned, even though our righteousness, that we need to turn away. You know, the word repent means to turn away. Amen? Now I want to go a little bit further in that. Let's go to... Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. God is good. We're going to settle this once and for all. Hallelujah. Now remember, everything that you are learned, you've got to be ready to teach. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. In verse 4. Is everybody there? And we have such trust through Christ towards God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of a new covenant not of the letter but of the what spirit. now what does spirit mean yeah. breath breath so we see he says it's the new covenant of the ministry of the spirit which means breath so nothing gets activated until you speak it amen, amen? for the letter kills but the spirit what gives life, gives life. verse 7 but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look stead steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Does everybody get that? So we see that this is the new covenant is a representation of the ministry of the Spirit. Amen? Now go to Mark 1. Glory to God. Mark chapter 1. That's why nothing is activated unless it's spoken. Confession brings possession. Glory to God. And Mark chapter 1. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 1. In verse 14. Mark chapter 1 and verse 14. And the word says, Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. What's the first thing he says? Repent. That means confess. And what? Believe which means to follow. Hello? Confess your sins and follow. Confess your sins and follow. Believe in the gospel. Does everybody get that? Why? Confession is a representation of the ministry of the Spirit. When you confess your sins, you activate the blood of Jesus. You cannot be saved, amen, without confession of sin. The Bible says confess Amen. The Bible even says confess to one another that you might be healed and be saved. Amen. So we must confess our sins. To God be the glory. I'll turn to Hosea 4, 6. Let, let's get down now. Hosea 4, 6. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, that's why it's so important to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Because you will not understand the Word. You know what? You'll understand what people are telling you from down the line. You'll never get revelation knowledge which brings reality without the Holy Ghost. That's why many of us have been astray. You know, many of us have been astray. Not that we've been taught on purpose incorrect things, but we've been taught incorrect things because they didn't know correct things. Amen? Amen. Praise God. In Hosea 4, 6. And it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge or lack of truth. Does everybody get it? Lack of truth. Because without true knowledge, you're perishing. Because you've rejected knowledge or the truth, I will also reject you from being priests for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God or the truth, I also will forget your children. How would God forget your children? Because we're not passing the truth down to them. Amen. 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 So my people are destroyed for lack of truth. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Let's go a little further. In Isaiah 33, 6. <clears throat> Isaiah 33, 6. Isaiah 33, 6. To God be the glory. Now, you've got to understand something. This isn't about to bring offense to anybody. It's to bring truth. We can't walk into this world and expect to do the things that we want to do and get to the throne room of God and God say, oh, sure, that's okay. I paid the price for you. Come on in. No, he paid the price for me and you to enter the first time. Hello? He paid the price for you and me to enter the first time and to confess sins that we've done, that we're doing, and that we will do. But it must be confessed. That's what activates the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Isaiah 33. Is everybody there? Good. I'm almost there. <laughs> In verse 6, it says, Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is His treasure. So what it's actually saying is wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom it's a representation of what to do with the knowledge. So how you use the truth, hello, is going to be the stability of your salvation. Does everybody understand that? How you're going to use the truth is going to be the stability of your salvation, whether you use it or not. There are many people who know the truth. Even the demons know the truth, don't they? Yes. They're still going to hell. <clears throat> Praise be to God. Now let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Quick, simple teaching. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 3. You know, my wife, she um, every time she comes across Scripture in the Bible about, you know, that what we're supposed to be doing and maintaining, she writes it in her book because she gets, you know, attacked so many times about people saying, well, man, I can still do whatever I want. I've been taught once saved, always saved. Well, that's totally incorrect. So she, she's able to, she writes the, all of these scriptures in one of her, her folders in the Bible, and every time she comes across someone that says it, she shows them the scriptures. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 14 and 15. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. Now let's start at 13. Hey, some things just don't change. In verse 13 it says, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now, this is written to the believers, isn't it? Amen. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and be assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. Hello? That's our responsibility, isn't it? 
and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for what? Salvation. Salvation. In other words, you better know. Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus, must continue in the knowledge of Christ, which is able to make you wise for salvation, through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. So you and I must what? Continue. Amen. Turn to Proverbs 21. Glory. Hallelujah. Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. Oh, hallelujah. God's got a plan or in it. And verse 16. Proverbs 21, verse 16. It says, A man who wanders from the way of understanding will rest in the assembly of the what? Dead. Dead. Hmm. You think they meant hell? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise be to God. And Romans 6.23. Romans 6.23. I know we're moving a little quick, but you know you can stop this tape at any time you want and listen. <laughs> and write down those scriptures and get right with it. <laughs> Romans 6.23. Hallelujah. Romans 6.23. <laughs> now, is this written to believers? Of course it is. Romans 6.23. Now it says, But now, having been set free from sin, and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness. Hello? And the end, everlasting life. Ooh. For the wage, oh, I'm sorry, that was at verse 22. We're going to verse 23 now. For the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So if you're still doing sin out there, you're heading toward separation from God, aren't you? Hallelujah. Okay. Praise be to God. Let's turn to John 10. John 10. Glory to God. John 10. We're going to do some skimming around this place here. It's good to hear the pages turning. Big John 10. Glory to God. Big John 10 and verse 27. Ooh. In verse 27 it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they what? They follow me. Oh, to God be the glory. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Now, that is a big controversy where people believe that once saved, always saved, because Jesus says, they'll never snatch them out of my hand. But the, the Lord says, and they follow me. So it's not that they're being snatched out of Jesus' hand, it's being they're walking away from his hand. Does everybody get it? Because Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and they will follow me. And neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. We must understand that God gives the choice to turn back. Amen. That's your choice. Amen. Amen. Amen? No man can snatch you out of the hands of God, but you can walk away from them. Amen? Amen? And so we have a choice, don't we? Let's go to Jeremiah 16. So that doesn't give me and you the right to go out there and do the things that are not right before God. Amen. Jeremiah 16. Oh, praise God. 
Jeremiah 16. And you know, if we did have a relationship with God and we knew that when we were out there and we broke covenant with the Lord, like going back to drugs, you know what I'm saying? Doing the things that we know we've broken covenant with God, we knew where we were headed in our heart. We knew that we were being separated from God. We knew it. And we knew that if we died, we wouldn't go to heaven. We knew it. Amen? Now the devil would love to tell you it's okay. God forgives you. This, that, and whatever. Just keep doing what you're doing. But without a confession, you're not going nowhere. You're going to hell. Hello? Without confession of repentance. Praise be to God. In Jeremiah 16 and verse 9. Somebody there? Amen. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I cause to cease, I will cause to cease from this place before your eyes and in your days the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. And it shall be when you show this people all these words and they say to you, Why has the Lord pronounced all this great disaster against us? Or what is our iniquity and what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? Then you shall say to them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, says the Lord, they have walked after what? Other gods and have served them and worshipped them and have forsaken me and not kept my law. And you have done worse than your fathers. For behold, each one follows the dictates of his own evil heart so that no one listens to me. Does everybody get it? Now, we don't want to follow the dictates of our own heart, do we? We want to do right before God. Amen? Amen. You know, the Bible says in Malachi 3, 6, it says, I am the Lord. I do not change. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So you cannot go by, well, that's the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament is the shadow of the things that come in the New Testament. Does everybody understand that? So you just can't say, well, the Old Testament doesn't mean anything. That's not true. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The Old Testament gives us even more clarity of the things that are manifesting in the New Testament. Amen? Hallelujah. Turn to Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 2. Oh, God is good. God is good. We're going to get this down and not be tormented about this. And you won't have to be tormented about whether you're going to heaven or hell if you're right with God all the time. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I get people that come across my path all the time and want to argue with it. Well, I'm not going to argue with it. This is the way it is. The Word says it. I believe it. And we're to live a holy life. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. In Hebrews 2, in verse 1. Hebrews 2, verse 1. The word says, Therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we what? Drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a what? Salvation. How would we escape it? Which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard Him. Does everybody understand that? Hallelujah. Give heed to the things we have heard lest we drift away neglecting salvation. Now, I want to go a little bit deeper here in a couple other things. Because there's so much controversy in this and we must get an understanding. Um, I want to go to Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. Before we go further into this teaching, I want to clarify one other thing. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Romans chapter 8. 
glory to God. Because these are some of the controversies and questions that will come up. And we want to answer them. Biblically. Not by man's interpretation, but by the spirit of interpretation. Hallelujah. And Romans 8, and verse 28. Romans 8, verse 28. And the word says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that he might, there's that word might again, be the firstborn among many brethren. That means he's got a choice, doesn't he? Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Now you must understand something. God desires here that no man be lost. Amen? And he's not a respecter of person, is he? The Bible says he's not. So every man is predestined to what? Be conformed. Everyone that comes into this world is predestined to be conformed in the image of God, in the image of Christ Jesus. Is everybody going to be in that? No, because no, some people are going to walk away from it. Amen? Some people are going to choose. So all men are predestined to come into the world. In fact, their names are written in the book of life. That's why babies and children go home when they die. Because the Bible tells us you must be written in the book of life. So when a child is written in the book of life, you are written in the book of life when you come into the world. When you die it determines whether your name gets removed or not. Does everybody understand that? And I'll show you. Go to Revelation chapter 3. So we're going to settle this about, well, once your name is written, it's written. Everybody's name is written in the book of life when they come into this world. It's when the day you die, whether where you're at with God is whether your name is removed or stays. Amen? Oh, God is good. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 3. Revelation 3, verse 3. Are we all there? Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard, hold fast and what? Now, isn't this Jesus sending a letter to the church? Isn't he warning them? This is to the church. Please understand it. These are spirit-filled believers who have been saved, sanctified, justified, and glorified. Hello? Now, listen. He reminds them. Verse 3 again. I want to share this with you. It says, remember. Jesus says, remember, remember, remember. Therefore, how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. That means follow and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names even in Sardis who have not defiled their garments. Garments are a representation of Christ's righteousness. You are have the garments of righteousness when you come into Christ. He says, there are some of you who haven't defiled them, but there are obviously there are many of you who have defiled those garments. And you and I must be blemish-free. Amen? And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Does everybody understand that? That means that there are some believers who are blemishing their garments and they're not worthy to walk with Him. Ooh. In verse 5, and it says, He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life. Now, if somebody can't understand this, they need to repent. If you cannot understand this, that the lie of always saved, that you're not always saved, if you choose to go the other way, and the, the Lord says that this is God. This is Jesus speaking. This is Him writing it to the church. Amen? He says, He who overcomes 
shall be clothed with white garments, and I will not blot his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Hello to the churches. Those are Spirit-saved believers. Amen. To God be the glory. I'm glad we got that over so we do not have to go over this thing about well, once your name is in the book of life, it stays there. No way, Jose. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to a couple other issues. We might as well get this done with. Okay. Uh, I want to give two examples. Two examples. Um, two examples of scriptures for an example of believers losing their salvation. All right? Let's go to Mark 16. Mark 16. Glory to God. Mark 16. God is good. Mark 16. Hallelujah. 16, 16. 16, 16. Mark 16, verse 16. And it says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. Hallelujah. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Amen. Well, he who believes and is baptized is going to be saved, aren't they? But they better walk it now. Hello? Now, believe means to what? Follow. Hallelujah. But he who does not believe or will does not follow will what? Be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe or follow. In my name, they will cast out demons. That's the first thing. Jesus is speaking this. It's in red letters. Jesus says, those who follow me. Why? Because if, they if they're truly following him, they're going to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is going to be manifest in their lives. And they're going to be casting out devils. Laying hands on the sick and doing the works of the Lord. Speaking in tongues. Every Right. Now listen. In my name they will cast out demons and they will speak with new tongues. And now, of course, that does not mean going to learn another language. And it doesn't mean that you're going to just stop cussing. Hello? Yes. If you truly are born again, filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost, you're going to have dominion over those things, aren't you? But you're also going to get a new language. Hallelujah. And they will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly... Of course, now you're not going to go around and drink Sinai or gasoline and test God. It will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So these are saved, spirit-filled believers. Does everybody understand that? Casting out devils, prophesying, laying hands on the sick. Does everybody get this? They are saved believers. Amen? Now go to Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Now, if you truly believe that, you can just go do what you want to do and expect to get into the kingdom of God after you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. I hope by now, by now, that understanding has come and you have great conviction and you're willing to go all the way with the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. You know, and the one thing is, is, man, I sure wouldn't want to preach to people that you can go do whatever you want because Jesus paid the price for you. Amen. And get before the Lord and find out how many people, because of what I preached, of that saying, they went, they ended up in hell. Amen. What a terrible thing. You know that that blood would be on whoever Amen. preached its hands. Amen. We need to get more. The Bible says, work out your own salvation. Work out your own salvation. Hello? Work out. That means you must walk it. Amen. Glory to God. In verse 21, just as Jesus speaking, he says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. He's quite specific, isn't he? He says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, I, we have, 
not prophesied in your name. Cast out demons in your name. And done many wonders in your name. In other words, Lord, Lord, have we not done all of these things? Have we not prophesied? Have we not cast out devils in your name? Have we not done many works in your name? Lord, Lord, look at all the works I'm doing. I'm following you. I'm a, a believer. I'm saved and I'm doing the works for you, Lord. Have I not done all of these things in your name? Does everybody understand that? And Jesus will then will say to them, and then I will declare to them, says Jesus, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Does everybody understand that? You who practice lawlessness. Hmm. Come on now, let's get real. Go to Galatians 5.19. You who practice lawlessness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And Galatians 5.19. 5.19. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which means drugs, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand. Now listen, this is Paul writing to the church. These are the Galatians. Does everybody understand this? He's writing to believers. He's warning them and he's telling them. His churches were spirit-filled, casting out devils, praying in the spirit. Wild, man. <laughs> he warns them. He says, those... As I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who what? Practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God or will not inherit eternal life. Does everybody get it? Well, Lord, I did this in your name. I did that in your name. It's like I share with everyone. You better know the cab driver when the cab comes to pick you up. And I sure wouldn't want to be be in a bar drinking with somebody when the Lord returns. I sure wouldn't want to have dope in my pocket being laying in with a woman or whatever, vice versa, when the Lord returns or when you die. Because what you're doing, who you're serving when you die is where you go. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Now, let's turn to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Is everybody all right? Amen. Praise be to God. 1 John chapter 3. Now, you know, we've been talking about the lawlessness. You know, the Lord spoke through Paul writing the letter saying, those who practice lawlessness. Remember, Jesus said, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Amen. So that means you, you're practicing it. Now, let's go a little further here. In chapter 3 and verse 4, whoever commits sin or obeys sin, amen, also commits lawlessness. Hello? And sin is lawlessness. Now remember the Bible said the wages of sin is death. And you have known that he was manifest to take away our sins and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins he has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. 
Does everybody get it? Let no one deceive you and preach to you that once you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you can go out and practice lawlessness and enter the kingdom of God. That's what he's talking about. Let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. And he who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest that he might, there's that word might again, destroy the works of the devil. In other words, you got a part of it, doesn't it? Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Now, I want to explain this a little bit. Okay? As a believer, we must abide in the truth of Christ and walk it. Amen? Amen. That's A. As a believer, we must abide in the truth of Christ and walk it. B. Our relationship with Christ must be on a continuous basis. Is everybody with me? A, as a believer, we must abide in the truth of Christ and walk it. We must abide in the truth of Christ and walk it. B, our relationship must be continuous. Amen? On a daily basis. C, if there is sin, you will know because of your fellowship with Christ. In other words, when you sin, you get the conviction quickly, don't you? you? You know, no matter what it may be, you may drop a hammer on your foot and say some things you shouldn't. But, you know, you, you were convicted and you go, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. See, so sin won't have dominion over you. That's what he's talking about. Those who sin are of the devil. That means those who practice sin. Does everybody understand it? He's <clears throat> okay, let me repeat this again. Now, A... As a believer, we must abide in the truth of Christ and walk it. B, our relationship must be continuous. C, if there is sin, you will know because your relationship and fellowship with the Lord, you're going to be quick to repent, aren't you? Amen? Like I said, you're not going to sin on purpose. Amen? You're going to sin by ignorance of something that has occurred, like something you said or something you knew and you shouldn't have done. You said, man, forgive me, Lord. I knew better. I knew better. I knew I shouldn't have done it. Please forgive me. Why? Because your relationship is there with him. So the, the, the true understanding of this is that sin, you're not practicing sin. Remember the Bible tells us that those who practice sin, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, D, if true repentance is birth, no sin is counted. Does everybody understand that? If true repentance is birth, if true repentance is given, no sin is counted. It's under the blood. Why? Because it's the ministry of the Spirit, isn't it? So you must confess. So when you confess, that activates the blood of the Lamb. Does everybody understand that? Now, let me share this with you. You know, if you're not in the Spirit, you don't get these things. You're, you're bound by the letter. Amen? You're going to be bound by the letter and not understand this stuff. That's why you got to get in the Spirit to understand this. Now, let me explain something to you. Let me explain a little bit about grace. Grace is a representation of, first thing, the Bible says that Jesus came in the fullness of grace and truth. Grace, in other words, unmerited favor of God. In other words, you didn't, you didn't earn the grace, amen, that was given from God. Now, that was given from God for you to enter the kingdom of God, amen? Okay, now, grace is a representation of holding judgment back. Does everybody understand it? So grace is also a representation of time. It's like, did you ever hear people say grace period? Amen? Why? Because it's a representation of time. Now, let me explain this. Let me just, the, now, Jesus said that you sin in your thoughts. He warned us, he said, if, if you lust after a woman, or covet after a woman, somebody else's or whatever, and you're lost in your mind, that's sin. Amen? So let's just, let me give you an example. Let's say you're driving. You go to this restaurant. Somebody's, uh, you meet this girl there, and you say, hey, how you doing, whatever. And she says, listen, uh, you know, I'd really like to see you. Would you mind uh, meeting me at a hotel? 
and, and she gives you a phone number. And you say, no, man, I can't do that. That's not what it's about. You walk away. Well, the devil's tormenting you now. You're driving home. You're not doing your spiritual warfare, casting down thoughts and imaginations, binding your mind to the mind of Christ, loosing yourself from these things, praising and worshiping God, praying in the Spirit and shaking that dust off. Hello? You get home. You got pulled out. And I'm using the example of a man, you know, with a girl, and it could be vice versa. You pull out this phone number. You're going to throw it away. The devil tells you, don't throw it away. Come on, it's time to call. Come on, it's time to call. Remember, God never interrupts himself. If God, if it interrupts what God has got you doing already, it ain't from God. Hello? Now listen. So now, you, you pick the, you, you go, no, no, no. You pick the phone up, you call a girl. Your thoughts and your mind are lusting after her. You've already sinned. Hello? You've sinned. Do you understand that? The Lord has counted that as sin. Now the grace period is ticking. Hello? He's holding back judgment, isn't he? The grace period is ticking. You talk to the girl. She convinces you to meet her at a hotel. You get in your car. You're driving to this hotel. I mean, there are tractor trailers going before you that say repent. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's billboards. You know, God is, <laughs> there's people preaching on the streets. I'm telling you, God is trying to rescue you. The grace period is about to end. When you go to that hotel, you knock on the door. You go to the hotel, you can't find a room. You go to the wrong room. I'm telling you, the Lord is trying to rescue you. You finally see the girl and you go in the room and you commit adultery. You have broken covenant. If you die, you go to hell. Does everybody understand that? That's known as grace. God's grace has been trampled. Does everybody understand that? Now I'm going to show you that. Okay, go to um, Hebrews 10. So you see that the sin begins in the mind, right? Now you've broken covenant. If you die, you go to hell. That's the difference between sin leading to death and sin not leading to death. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10. You know, there's enough scriptures in here. I could go on and on and on. We could do three or four tapes on the scriptures that are in the Bible telling us that once saved is not always saved. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10 and verse 26. And people say, you mean you've got to be saved, re-saved again? No, you need to repent to maintain that salvation. Hello? Amen. In verse 26, is everybody there? Amen. Now listen, this is very careful, very important. For if we sin willfully, just like that example that was given, if we sin willfully, remember, you sinned in your mind, now you're going to break covenant. Okay? If you sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth. There is no longer, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. In other words, you're not covered under that anymore. You have broken covenant with God. If you have sinned willfully, there is no sacrifice. In other words, the grace has run out. Does everybody understand that? Until when? Until you repent. Does everybody get it? Until you repent. Watch. But a certain fearful expectation of what? Judgment. Why? Because there ain't no more grace there. And fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Verse 28. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Now listen. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will be he will will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant, remember he broke covenant, by which he was sanctified a common thing, 
and insulted the spirit of grace. Oof. How much more worse would his judgment be? In verse 30. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. Whose people? His people. It is, fear, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. On what? On a broken covenant. Go to verse 35. Verse 35. Is everybody there? Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. And what is that reward? Salvation. Hello? Salvation. And verse 36. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. What's the promise? Salvation, eternal life. Hello? Oh, man. If we can't get this by now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise be to God. Now, let's go to Hebrews 10. Oh, we're there. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Forgive me. Let's stay in Hebrews 10. Let's go, uh, let's, let's go to verse 37 and 38. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. Now listen. But if anyone draws back, hello? My soul has no pleasure in him. Verse 39. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. In other words, following. Amen? To the saving of the soul. Is everybody with me? Praise be to God. Glory to God. Now, we're going to go to a few other scriptures here just to put icing on the cake. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And Matthew 6, 24. Matthew 6, 24. You know, we've just layered this cake quite a bit. It's got a solid foundation right now. You cannot argue this point. It's just impossible. If somebody's arguing this point, they have lost sight of the true Christ. Justification is the hardening of the heart. The only reason why people justify is because they still want to do the things of the world. But the Bible tells us that those who are friends of the world are enemies of God. Amen? And Matthew 6. Glory to God. Now, remember, this is not about bringing condemnation on people and speaking against anyone, but it's bringing truth because Jesus said truth makes us free. Amen. You can't, this is something you can't do on assumption. I mean, you sure don't want to be walking in the world going, well, I think I'm saved. I, you know, I mean, I, 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 you know, I, I believe that I'm saved, but, you know, you want to know that you're saved and you want to have a relationship with God. Amen. 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 Praise God. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24, is everybody there? Amen. Hallelujah. The, and Jesus spoke and says, No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now that's a representation of world. Everybody understand that? So you cannot have ser two masters. You'll either serve the world or God. And the ruler of the world is Satan. Amen? Go to 1 Corinthians 10. First Corinthians 10. All praise be to God. <laughs> First Corinthians 10. Now you got enough scriptures here, and you can find more and more and more in the Word. I mean, every time I go to something else, it, 
I just get the revelation of more and the importance that you and I are supposed to live a holy, blemish-free life. Amen? And the only way that you'll have a blemish-free life is by fellowship with the Lord and confess your sins. We're being made perfect. We're not perfect yet, are we? We're still carrying a fallen nature, but if you're led by the Spirit, your flesh is crucified. Hallelujah. And 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. Hello. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Mm. You can't. Drinking the cup of the demons is a representation of eating the delicacies of the devil. Does everybody understand that? You know, we must if we have that relationship with the Lord, we'll be careful in all things, won't we? We'll be conscious of all things that we're doing if we truly have that relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, go to Romans 8. In other words, we cannot have fellowship with demons. Hallelujah. You know, I share with people, you know, who, who were set free from drugs and alcohol, and then they go back drinking again. I share with them, man, you can't not have fellowship with the Lord's table if you're drinking the cup of demons. Did you ever drive by a bar and it says food and spirits? Amen? Well, they ain't kidding. That's food and demons. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, Jesus drank wine. Oh, I'm not going into that teaching. You know? I'm not going into that teaching. But anyways, Jesus drank the fruit of the vine. Hello. Because he warned us, he said, don't drink fermented things. Hello? And you, oh, that's a whole teaching. I'm not going there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go back to Romans 8. Praise be to God. In verse 5. Romans 8, verse 5. Is everybody there? Glory. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who... Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Is this letter written to believers? Hmm. Good. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set, their, set the, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is what? Yeah. Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Your carnal mind hates the things of God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Does everybody get it? <clears throat> so then, those who are in the flesh cannot what? Please God. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go to Revelation. 3.16 Revelation 3.16 Hallelujah <clears throat> Revelation 3.16 Somewhere around there anyway Hallelujah. And this is another letter that Jesus wrote to the church. And let's start at verse 15. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because hmm. you say I am rich and have become wealthy, and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire that you may be rich and what? White garments. Remember I shared with you before. That you may be clothed. That the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. 
Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who is an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To God be the glory. Now, let's go to Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everybody all right? A couple more scriptures and we'll close. I think this is 20. Matthew 25. <laughs> Short, simple teaching. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 25, and God's got a plan. Oh, glory to God. Oh, let's, I like verse 13 first. It says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. <clears throat> and you know neither the day nor hour that you're going to die and get before the Lord. Hello. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling, uh, is that what I want? Traveling to a far country. No, that's not what I want. Hallelujah. But I wanted to start with chapter, uh, verse 13 anyways. Hallelujah. Now we're going to go to the true thing. Okay, let's start at verse 1. Hmm. Okay, let's start at verse 1. Verse 1, 25, 25, 1. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who shall take their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Who's the bridegroom? Jesus. Jesus. Now, five of them were wise and five were foolish. And I'm going to share with you that in every denomination there's going to be wise and foolish virgins. Amen? Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. In other words, how do you get the oil? Fellowship, praise and worship. Hello? Oil represents Holy Spirit. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. In other words, they maintained. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. They all slumbered and slept. Amen? And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Now, you've got to understand that when you become washed with the blood of Jesus, you are considered a virgin. Amen? We're virgins when we get washed with the blood of Jesus, aren't we? Amen. Virgins of sin. Praise God. So they all rose up and went out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, got cleaned up. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Pray for me. Pray for me. I know I'm not right. Pray for me. But the wise answered, saying, no, lest there should not be enough for us and you. In other words, man, you should have been right yourself. Get right. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. In other words, you must work out your own salvation. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. After, afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Again, Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming or the day or hour that you die. Does everybody understand that? That means we must maintain. Amen? Now let's go to Revelation 21 and we're going to close with this. Almost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Revelation 21. Glory to God.
Revelation 21 and verse 7. Glory to God. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I'll be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderer, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all the liars shall have their part in the lake of that which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Hmm. Does everybody understand that? In conclusion, as Moses was led to deliver God's people to the promised land, as promised, their lawless deeds forfeited their entrance. Amen? In which, out of all of those millions of people, only two made it. We must be covenant-keeping children, holding on to Christ Jesus and abiding in Him and never letting go. Jesus came to fulfill the law of Moses and to establish a new law of covenant, his word. In Ecclesiastes 12, 13, the word says, Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Now the Bible tells us that judgment begins in the house of God. In its beginning, it's already been gone for a while. Paul was writing letters to the house of God, telling them, warning them to get right and maintain it. Why? Because those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God or eternal life. Like I said, if we truly have a relationship with the Lord, we don't have to worry about losing your salvation. Amen? Amen. And when we do blow it, we must be quick to repent. Repent means to turn away, to maintain that. We explain the understanding of the period or what grace means, grace period. Remember, God wants us as sons. He's not out to judge people. Amen? We bring ourselves in the own judgment. In fact, people, God doesn't send them to hell. They send themselves to hell. Amen? And as I shared before, there is not one unbeliever in hell. When they're in hell, they believe. Well, unfortunately, it's too late. Amen? May God bless you, protect you, empower you, and bring revelation knowledge of this truth tonight that we can carry it to those who have been deceived by the lie of always saved. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. To God be the glory.